The weather outside is frightful And inside is so delightful And my equipment cannot handle the rain So I am going to film inside for a couple of videos I hope you don't mind, I will be outside before you know it If I would have known about how gruesome the story will be I would have filmed this for like Halloween But I really wanted to get this out there because I think it is a nice spooky story It's the story about the ship, the Batavia. So the ship, the Batavia, was from the Dutch East India Company. One of the most profitable things ever in existence in the world. Uh, it has its ups and downs and it has its gruesome stories. And one of these stories is about the ship itself. Because the ship, the Batavia, has quite a history. The flagship, the Batavia, was built in Amsterdam in 1628. The ship also sailed that year for the first time uh, under the command of Pelsart with its skipper Jacobs. However, this was not the right combination because Pelsart and Jacobs already knew each other and they had a fight before in Surat where Pelsart was basically uh, hammering down on Jacobs. Jacobs became drunk there in Surat and he had insulted Pelsart and Pelsart wouldn't have it and they were basically fighting ever since then so the combination of those two on one ship was not a great idea so during the voyage Jacob was actually uh, trying to get a team together and together with a man called Cornelis they wanted to take over the ship they basically wanted to start a new life elsewhere and the way they wanted to start this new life or actually start a new kingdom was with all the silver and gold that was on the ship uh, basically money to get the spices for the spice route. So after leaving uh, Cap de Good Hope, Cape de Good Hope, Jacobs was actually steering the ship in the wrong direction so they couldn't uh, arrive at their destination at the right time. Steering away the ship was also a way to actually get rid of the rest of the fleet. So Jacobs and Cornelius already arranged a group of people who were not really happy with how things were going on the ship and they were planning a mutiny. But before things even could begin, on June the 4th, 1629, the ship was wrecked on a group of islands near Western Australia. It was wrecked on the Houtman Abroholz, so this little group of islands near the west coast of Australia. And as the ship broke apart, 40 people of the 341 passengers already drowned during that wreckage. With almost nothing to eat and no fresh water in sight, and being practically in the middle of nowhere, Commander Pelsart tried to sail to Batavia. While Pelsart was away, he left Cornelis uh, in charge to lead the group to get fresh water, to find food, etc. And actually Pelsart succeeded and he got into Batavia, so the place Batavia, and he got the command of the ship de Chardin to get back all the people who hopefully survived and also get the treasure back, you know, all the gold and silver that was left on the ship. But Pelsart had been away for quite a while. It took him a month to sail to Batavia and it also took a month to get back to the wreckage because they didn't know where they were because someone had steered the ship into the wrong direction and they didn't know where it was and when he finally arrived to what should have been a, a nice group of people trying to survive he discovered a bloody massacre so what happened Cornelius became a bit power crazy. The first thing he did was commandeering all food and weapons for his own basically. And of course he said it was for the greater good but he basically wanted to strengthen his own supplies and the people who were loyal to him instead of Pelsart or the VOC. Next he sent about 20 able men to find water and food in nearby islands uh, in the hope they would just perish away. And with the able-bodied people away, with Pelsart away, he actually committed the mutiny. And they killed over 125 people just because they could. And of course it started as the mutiny to save themselves, to save food, to get like rid of the people they couldn't uh, overpower. But after a while they just started to kill because they liked it. There were a couple of very very disturbed people there. Um, eventually Cornelius planned to have like a population of 45 people so up to 341 people he wanted 
45 to survive so they could last longer with the supplies they had so the supplies of food and fresh water but meanwhile those 20 men that were actually sent away to perish they unexpectedly found food and fresh water so they actually survived and after a while well people were trying to run away from the mutineers because they were afraid they were going to get killed they learned about all the atrocities that happened uh, on that island where Cornelis was staying they put Viba Hayes uh, as the leader, he was a soldier of the VOC and he was one of the most uh, able people to lead a group of men to get basically into a war with the mutineers. These people tried to build a fort out of coral and limestone, basically everything they could find and they got a watch settled in and they were basically really preparing for battle, making makeshift weapons, getting everything done to defend themselves against these mutineers who really wanted to kill them. And they actually got into fights. They were fighting against each other. The mutineers wanted these people dead and the 20 people who now had grown in number because other people from the other islands were fleeing to them. They were trying to fight against the mutineers, trying to get them to uh, surrender. And in October, when the fight was at its heaviest, Pelsard arrived with his ship, the Saradan, to rescue them. After Pels had learned of all the atrocities that happened, he commanded that all the people, all the mutineers, were trialed and executed. Cornelius and his six men were the first European people who were legally executed in Australia. After a short trial, because of course in the 17th century things went differently, uh, the convicted people were sent to Seal Island. Cornelius and some other major offenders, major mutineers, got their hands chopped off before they were hanged. Two other mutineers actually got marooned on mainland Australia, making them the first European people who actually spent their entire lives on Australia. Of the original 341 people who were boarded the Batavia, only 122 came back. But what happened to the shipwreck? It was still there. It was one of the first ships that wrecked in Australia. In 1972, the Dutch government uh, transferred the rights of this ship, of the salvage of the ship, to Australia. And so Australia could begin to actually get the things that were left in the wreckage. Some of the excavated islands are now in the Western Australian Museum. But a lot of the anchors and the cannons are left in situ, meaning they're still back there. The wreck itself remains one of the premier diving sites of the West Australian coast. With this whole story, with the mutineers being marooned on the mainland Australia, it is basically offered as an alternative uh, story of how Europeans came to Australia compared with all the sending convicts from UK to there. But what does this have to do with the Netherlands, you ask? It's all in Australia now. Well, not everything. Um, there's a replica of the ship here in the Netherlands in Lelystad. Actually, it's called Batavia Stad. Uh, there is a replica of the ship, the Batavia. It was built between 1985 and 1995. And you can go there, you can visit the ship, you can crawl in the ship. There's a museum, there is a, a workplace where they actually build uh, other things for the ship. They actually use uh, materials that people would be using back in the day and it actually sailed for a while. It had some commemorative voyages and is now actually in Lelystad and you can go there on the ship. I've been there. Uh, I heard the cannons. They were very loud but uh, it was very nice to look at all the things and see how things went. So if you want to see how a 17th century ship would look like, especially a ship from the Dutch East India Company, go to Lelystad, Batavia Stad and see the Batavia. I hope it wasn't too much of a horror story here in December, but the Batavia is really interesting. You can look up a lot of information, uh, podcasts, there are movies made about it, uh, of course very dramatized. And of course in Australia you can also find a lot of information about this ship. But yeah, it is a Dutch ship with Dutch roots and not a nice story, but still very interesting. Hopefully next time I will talk about something else 
less dangerous. Okay, see you next time. But before anything could begin even, the ship was wrecked on June the 4th in 1629 on the Houtholt Islands. No, Houtmont Oberholz. Okay. It also sailed that year under the command of Captain... No, it's not Captain. Senior Merchant. Okay, sorry. Okay, one of the things that might happen is that my green screen <laughs> will collapse because my cats are playing in the green screen uh, thing and they love to, to get around in the fabric. But before anything could even begin, the ship was wrecked on June 4th in 1629. Wrecked on a group of islands, there was nothing there. So of the 332, wait, this has 41 first, narrative. It's sometimes offered as the founding narrative. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Okay. This gruesome story of the Batavia, especially with people being marooned on mainland Australia, People are often... Can I get this sentence in one way right? Like, now? In Lelystad, there is a life-size replica built in 1985. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah